Hello, welcome to Garden of Luma, where I provide you with tips for growing edibles in a hot climate. Hello everybody, Joe here with Garden of Luma. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys my trees in the Anona family. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about those trees, just give you guys an update on what those trees are looking like right now. We are moving into summer. It is June now in the Phoenix, Arizona area where our temps are starting to soar. It's getting really hot right now, you know, consistently 100 degrees or higher during the day. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about these trees, show you what they're looking like right now. I've done some videos in the past that go more specifically into the individual fruit trees. If you want to check those out to get more tips on growing that specific variety. But in this one, I'm just gonna cover all my Anonas and just kind of show you what's going on with those. All right, so let's go check it out. Okay, let's start with the soursop tree here. And it's kind of tough to see because it just blends in with all the other foliage around it. But to give you an idea, there you go, there it is. Tucked in here. And this tree is probably my most tropical tree in my yard here. And it's doing really well, as you can see. Look at this. Look at this nice green new foliage here. And it is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We're in June here in the desert, so it is scorching hot, really dry. Uh, like 10% humidity if we're lucky. And this thing just seems to thrive as long as you give it a nice microclimate like you can see here with a lot of foliage around it. It has not flowered. I've grown this from seed. Started it in 2016. And this tree tends to look the most beat up in the winter time. But in summer it seems to do fine. I would not, like I said, put this out just in full blazing sun all day here or anything. But as long as you keep it, like this is under a canopy here of a large ash tree, as long as you give it a lot of shade and just dappled sun, early morning sun, this thing will do great through our summer. Okay, so let's take a look at some of my other Anonas. You can see my sugar apple tree right here. It's gotten quite tall, quite large. And this is only a couple years old from seed. I started this seed in 2017, the springtime of 2017. So it's really only like two years old from seed right now. And so it's done quite well. It's grown pretty vigorously here, as you can see. Takes our heat really well here in the desert. No problems there. It's our winter, our cold snaps that causes this guy problems. So that's why I grow it in a container to move it indoors as needed. Uh, currently it's in a 15 gallon container. And if I get up here a little closer, you can see all the little flower buds on this tree here. So this tree is just loaded right now with flowers. Trying to zoom out, there's some there that you can see. And so it's just absolutely covered right now in flowers. And they're all at various stages. And so I've been trying to hand pollinate. There you go, there you can see like a male there when it opens up and kind of starts to dry up. And the flowers start off in a female stage and transition to a male. So you actually need a few flowers at various stages in order to pollinate. And these require hand pollination. I come out here with a little black cup as these open up and knock the pollen into the cup. And so I use the pipe cleaner there to try to hand pollinate these. So far, I haven't seen any that have taken yet. And so that's one of the challenges with growing Anonas here in the desert, the hot, dry climate that we're in is is some of the pollination issues because they like a lot of humidity during pollination, which we do not get, especially right now in June when this is flowering. This is probably our driest time of the year. So we're talking like 10% humidity if we're lucky. And so that's the big challenge with the Nona's. 
That is one of the reasons why I've grown a lot of these from seed as well. Just because I didn't want to pay a whole lot of money for these trees if they were never going to produce fruit for me. All right, so off to the side here. This is my African Pride seedling tree. This is the one I have in the ground here. And this thing has grown great. As you can see, really large. And I did protect this in the winter time. I really don't even know if that's necessary. I mean, you might be able to get away with leaving this unprotected. A bit more cold tolerant, definitely more so than the sugar apple. And so it probably could get through our winters, especially if you're in the inner city part of Phoenix. But since I am in Queen Creek, which is an outskirt, does get a few degrees colder. So just to be safe, I did protect this and I have been protecting it the last couple years. But it's done great, this one in the ground. And this one has not flowered. I'll show you my other African Pride Adamoya seedling. And this one does have larger leaves. And so I'm kind of wondering if this is more of a cherimoya, taking on more of the cherimoya traits. Because an Adamoya is a cross between a sugar apple and a cherimoya. And without having a grafted tree, I'm not really sure what exactly I'm gonna get as far as fruit quality, if I'll ever get any fruit. I do intend to graft some various varieties, some scions onto this, probably next year, just to have some tried and true varieties to go along with this seedling, because I don't know what kind of quality fruit I would get off of this tree. All right, let me show you my last Denona. Okay, so here is my last African Pride Adamoya. Again, grown from seed. This was started in 2016. Both my Adamoyas were grown from seed in 2016. So they're three years old now, going into their third year. And as you can see with all my Anonas, they grow really well here in the Phoenix, Arizona area and growing zone 9B in this hot desert climate that we live in. So they can handle our heat, our dry air, as long as you give them some afternoon shade. I mean, look how green this is, no issues. It's the cold snaps that you wanna protect them and get them through in our winter time and then you just don't want to put them out in just full all day blazing sun so as long as you give them a microclimate this one's up against the east side of east facing wall here so it's pretty well shaded in the afternoon and i did get a couple flowers on this here so the one in the ground i did not see any flowers this one i noticed about five there's one there. A few have already opened up and I did try to pollinate this with my sugar apple blossoms because there's another good sized flower. Looks like that one is just about ready to open up. Because they didn't open up when I needed them to. So it was just sporadic since I only had five flowers on here. It'd be like only one would open up and I just didn't have anything to pollinate. So here's one there. If you can see that, that I attempted to pollinate with the sugar apple. Not sure if that is going to set or not there. We'll see and I'll keep you guys updated. All right, so that's a little bit about Anonas, what my Anona trees are looking like here in the Phoenix, Arizona area right now. It is June, so we are triple digits in the hot time of the year, hot, dry time of the year, summertime here. Check me out at GardenOfLuma.com for more tips on gardening and growing fruit trees, especially in hot, dry climates. If you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe to stay updated on the latest videos. I do a new video every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks for watching.